Jordan Elsie for Low Kick MMA. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Ian Gary ahead of his UFC debut at UFC 268. How's it going, Ian? Man, life is good. No complaints. Just finished training, so just rehydrating and about to get some food. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Um, since we last spoke, a lot's changed. You obviously you've you've become a Cage Warriors champion. You've moved to America. You've got a new camp, and you're in UFC, and you're on one of the biggest cards of the year. What, what, what's going on? How are you dealing with all this? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds good, right? Sounds good. Um, do you know what, dude? I'm taking every step. It's, it's just like it's in my stride. Like everything is good. Life is life is crazy. It's fast. It's it's fun. I can't not love what's happening. I mean, the fact that I'm making my debut on the biggest card of the year. The fact that I've signed to the UFC, that I've become a world champion, I've done everything I said I was going to do, and now it's just time to kind of do it all over again. It's like, right, obviously it's a bigger fan base, it's a bigger, it's a bigger stage, it's a bigger organization. It's like, okay, great, I just get to go and do exactly what I did in Cage Warriors, but do it in the UFC and show people why I'm the fucking best, why I have the hype, why people like watching me fight, why people believe stuff when I say it, because it's the truth, because like when I fight... Every time I win, people just, they, they say, oh, but this guy will do something. And they don't. I beat them, I beat them, I beat them, I beat them. And then there's no one left to say anything other than, okay, this kid's right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and we'll, and we'll just start with the camp, Sam, for them, MMA. How are you dealing with the mm-hmm. transition? Like, you must be getting a, a, a bunch of work in over there. Dude, there's just savages on the mats. Like, from just every single person that's on the mat is unbelievable. The coaching staff is phenomenal. And again, I'm very blessed to be to be able to get up and just move over to America and, and train with the elite, the elite and, and learn off these guys. Like I'm I think I'm the youngest person or one of the youngest um fighters on the mats. And the guys that I'm training with are all late twenties, early thirties, and they've been in this game, they, the knowledge they have the experience they've all had. It's just a, an amazing place for me to soak up everything that they can throw my way. And it, it can only mean one thing that Ian Gary is going to get better. Yeah, absolutely. And, and in terms of the names and who you've been training with, do you focus on, you know, in terms of sparring and things like that? Do you kind of buddy up with certain people or is it different people every day? Or how, how's that working out? I mean, like this, I'm try. I stay, try to stay around my weight. I mean, I've never really had an abundance of guys that are at my weight um, in the gym. I've always been the bigger, the bigger guy in the gym. I've always been sparring with guys that are mainly lighter than me. Um, so the fact that I, I can grab bigger guys, I can grab guys at 170, 185 and go with them. And, and it's the abundance of it. It's like, all right, four lads can't do it. Oh, can you do it? And it's like, yeah, of course. And they're all elite. <laughs> it's it's phenomenal. So I can only I can only be happy with what I've got. And the lads that are that I'm training with are phenomenal. I don't care who it is because everyone here at Sanford is amazing. So I just every round is going to be a tough round, and it's just going to be it's just going to be what. Sorry, there's some someone drilling outside. <laughs> every uh, every round is going to be phenomenal. We're just going to move in here for two seconds. Right. Um. So yeah, everything's everything's crazy. Yes, and I'm saying her. Um. So yeah, everything's good, man. And I'm just I'm blessed to be on the on the match with the, the guys that are here. Yeah, and obviously you're a young fighter, so are you feeling the benefits of this already, or do you feel like you're kind of swimming with sharks at the at the moment? How how does it feel? How are you adjusting? I'm definitely not swimming. I mean, I'm definitely not swimming with sharks in a sense of like I feel out of my depth. I am. <laughs> I, I can see, I can, look, there's levels, right? And I know, like, when you when you look at someone like Gilbert Burns, right, he's the elite of the elite in grappling. So, of course, I'm going to learn of him. If I, if I go grappling with him, he's, he's going to beat me, right? He's, he's one of the best welterweights in the world. Like, he's fought for a UFC title. He's going to fight for a UFC title again. Do you know what I mean? He's going to keep winning. Like, it's nothing but learning. So... I'm, I'm just going to enjoy every second of it, but I'm absolutely a shark in my own right. I mean, I think if you talk to any of the guys here, they'll know it. They'll tell you. They see they see the talent. They see the potential. They know it's it's there. Um, there's a hell of a lot for me to, to work on and learn because 
I'm I like I'm not perfect yet. Like I want to be the perfect fighter. I want to be the best wrestler. I want to be the best grappler. I want to be the best striker. I want to <laughs> I want to talk better than everyone else. I want to entertain more than everybody else. And that takes time, man. And of course, I'm a young fighter, but that doesn't mean I don't know what I do best. And I'm I'm good. I come in here. I I train my ass off, and I work hard. And that's that's it. And everyone's everyone can see it. And I'm just excited for what's to come. Very good to hear. And in terms of um, you, are you are you fully based in America now? Is that where you're staying, or will you be popping back and forth? So as for right now, I'm just in America. Um, after the fight, I'll go home. I'll see some friends and family. I'll I'll um I'll decide that the plan going forward. But yes, it's it's to come back and train here and take advantage of the gym and the talent and the and the knowledge that is is here. And I think just going forward in the sense of when you look at the, the guys that are on the mats, the training with them is only going to benefit my career. And it'd be quite idiotic to not take advantage of the opportunity I have in front of me. Absolutely. And just to go back a minute, with everything we've spoke about and everything that's going on in your life, have you had time to take in that cage while it's title win? Obviously, it's a huge achievement. You know, some people spend the whole career chasing that and obviously you're chasing more, but it's still massive yeah. no matter what. So did you get the chance to do that? I mean, dude, I like I kind of felt like the whole tournament was made to to slow me down. So I kind of felt like I was the champion when they were struggling to find me someone to fight back in December in 2019. So it was, I, or it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, dude, I just it's just the way it is. I I've, I've enjoyed every second of the, the Cage Warriors road, and I'm very blessed, obviously be able to fight during the pandemic and winning the belt was just was just another like it was just another um notch it was just another it's just another uh rung in the ladder is that it it's a rung in the ladder yeah just another step for me it was it was an achievement i wanted and i set out set myself out from a young man because i knew all right this is the best way for me to get to the ufc if i become the the, the cage Wars champion the ufc will notice me um, they have a great connection, so why on earth wouldn't I want to do that? And here we are. It's because of it's because of K and the, and and the show that they run and the organization that they, that they, the good um relationship they have with the UFC that I got snapped up so quick because I've, I I fight so well, I talk the talk, I walk the walk, I back it up, I go in and I put on performances like I have time and time and time again. I've I've enjoyed every second of it. So the K Warriors belt wasn't necessarily a like something I've I've dreamt of and oh this is amazing this is it I have so many dreams that are so much bigger than that like I want to motivate the kids to get into the gym I want to motivate like adults to change their life I want to motivate people not only in fighting but in life itself and me doing what I love is just a bonus in life Brilliant. and the performance itself was you happy with that you know reflect them back on it how, how do you think it went I knew I wasn't going to be able to use everything I had because of the injury I was walking into the fight with. Um, I picked up another injury in the fight that kind of slowed me down that people didn't know about. Like, but at the end of the day, that's just that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Like, you get in there, if you break your if you break your foot, you break your hand, you break your face, whatever it is, you've got to deal with it. And I'm not a quitter. And like, there was there was a lot of things that that could have told me to back out that fight, not show up, or give up in the cage because something was sore and I didn't and I went in there and I done what I could with what I had and I mean I'm pretty sure if you asked anybody would you think I was injured in that fight or would you think that there was the, the list of things that would, had gone wrong that it looked like that was gone wrong you'd say no it looked like I was just <laughs> on, on fire and that's what I was I was just in control of everything that happens yeah absolutely yeah that's the first I'm hearing of an injury and just um, your opponent, <laughs> your opponent Jack Grant. Since that, like a team friendly in the build up, we spoke about it last time. It was you know exchanges of Instagram posts, uh, messages, and things like that. He's gone on to Bellator, picked up a win. Are you happy to see him go on and, and achieve something? I I love Jack Grant, and it was just unfortunate that we had to we had to step across the cage from each other. Like it was just, I really do like him, and I want to see him do well. And he's he's an amazing person. He's a really nice guy, and it's. 
it's hard to go, to go in there and, and, and fight someone that you like because I don't want to hurt him, but I'm not going to stop myself doing what I love and, and going in there and beating someone up because we're friends. Like, I punch my best mates in the face every day, and like that's what I've been doing since I was a kid. Like, we've been in bat, battling each other since since I was a child when I was 10 doing boxing. Like, it's what I've grown up doing. So I don't care if you're my best mate. I don't care if you're my, my family. I don't care what it is. If you're stood across that cage from me, we're, we're going to do that. Um, but I'm delighted to see him move on. I think he deserves to, to move on to a big enough organization and, and enjoy his time, enjoy his career. I think he can do very well. He's a very talented fighter. And I look forward to watching his career. Good. Well, then back to you, obviously. On to the big show now, UFC. How, first thing first, how does it feel to be a UFC fighter? It hasn't really kicked in yet. Like when people say, like, oh, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I'm a fighter. And they're like, oh, yeah, who do you fight for? I'm like, the UFC? I'm like, I don't know. I don't, do, I, can't, do I say that? Like, uh, it's just, it's, yeah, it's, it's weird, but like, it's cool. It just makes me think, oh, I'm a UFC fighter now. Oh, wait till I say I'm a UFC champion. That's, that's the way my aspect is. I'm just thinking forward. And obviously you're booked on, you know, the biggest, I'd say the biggest card, the UFC 268, New York, Madison Square Garden. What does that say for you in terms of the UFC and how they see you as a potential prospect, putting you on a massive show first time around? They know what's up. <laughs> it lets me know that they know what's up. I mean, they put me on the biggest card of the year. They let me, they're, they're making me debut at Madison Square Garden. They're doing this right. They know they've got their hands on, on, on something special and they're not gonna they're not gonna throw it away. I mean, that's that's magical in itself in the sense that they know how good I am and what I can do. Yeah, and, and as I mentioned, Madison Square Garden, that's that's another thing. You know, fighters spend the whole career dreaming about fighting in that arena. You get it your first go on UFC debut, Are you excited about that? Dude, it's it's insane to be fighting in the most icon- in the most iconic sporting venue in the world when you look at the names. Ali, Mayweather, McGregor, like Michael Jordan, like it's just history. The amount of history in that stadium is is ridiculous. Now you're gonna add Ian Gary to that list. And people won't realize it now, but in a couple of years, when my career is done, they'll go, Oh my god, that's where he started. The history will be there. And the opponent, the first opponent is um, Jordan Williams. Uh, what what you make of him? It hasn't exactly gone his way in the UFC yet, but he seems like no. a game opponent. Dude, he seems game, he seems tough, and he hits hard. But that's that's the last thing you want to do on like and, and when you're with me is like is be tough. If you're durable against me, I've said this a couple of times, it's gonna get you beat because it's gonna get you hurt because I'm gonna I'm gonna find gaps, I'm gonna find holes, no matter where it is, on the feet, on the ground, I'm going to beat you and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold back. So He's tough. He hits hard. And obviously, I've got to respect that. And I respect that every, every single opponent I come up against. But I'm just better. And it's just a case of me going in there and doing my job. And, yeah, he's – look, I, I wish him the best. But I've got to go in there and get rid of him and do it nice and do it in style. And how do you see it happening? Obviously, as we said, he's a tough guy. Do you think you'll be able to finish him? Ah, yeah. I'd, I'd be annoyed if I won't. But at the end of the day, a win's a win. Um, I'll be annoyed if I don't finish him. I'm always hunting for a finish. Um, the only two decisions in my career are because of injuries that have happened in the fight. And that's just me changing up the game plan. If an injury happens in the fight, and for example, like my pro debut, I broke my hand a minute, in, my right hand a minute into the fight. It's like, okay, so I can try and knock this guy out or I can be smart. I can piece him up. And I can win the fight and get out of here on the skate, like with just what I have. Whereas if I start trying to be desperate because I'm sore or there's something gone wrong, that's when people lose. That's when people get caught. You need to be like bulletproof in your mindset. If you make that decision, you go for it. So the win is what matters to me always. So, I mean, I don't care. Like I don't care if it's the, like the most amazing knockout in the world, or if it's a slugfest, or if it's me getting bashed and I catch him with a lucky sub. The win is what matters. But I will go out there every single time and I will do my best to put on a show and finish everyone I fight. And the thing about being in the UFC is if you do put on a show, if you do finish the fight, you, you might get a, a big bonus. Is that something you've got your eye on? I don't have, you know, I don't have my eye on them. I, I, I believe, like, when you look back at all of my fights thus far, 
I, if they were on the UFC against those those opposition, I would have got bonuses. And I just think the way the fight style I have, the entertainment factor that I have, I will get those bonuses. I will get. I, I just, it's just. It's. I don't think about them. I'm not like. Oh, I need to get this bonus. I'm. I'm very blessed with my lifestyle outside of the UFC. Like I, I run my own company and I've been making money before, long before the UFC. And I'm. I'm. I'm just looking forward to going there. And if that. If that's an opportunity that I can. I can grab. Why not? Wouldn't I grab it? Do you know what I mean? If all I have to go in there and do is put on a show and get a nice finish to get extra money to fuel my career and fuel my life, why on earth wouldn't I do it? Yeah, and Paul, about taking advantage of, you know, the situation. Um, in September, we seen Paddy Pimlet make his UFC debut and he's kind of grabbed the bull by the horns. He went in there, yes. knocked the guy out, got a bonus and, you know, got yep. all kinds of sponsorships. Is that something you're looking mm-hmm. to emulate? I mean, congrats to Paddy, do you know what I mean? What, what else can you say? I mean, he's done absolutely amazing off the back of that win. And he deserves it. Do you know what I mean? He, he like, he stepped into that cage. He done what he needed to do, and he's reaping the rewards. And if anything like that will happen to me, then I'll just, I'll be very blessed. Hopefully, man. And, and you know, all going well um, in November. What is next for you? Obviously, you said earlier the plans to go home and spend some, you know, Christmas time with the family. And then, would you be looking to get back in there early twenty twenty two? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I mean, I. Depending on how fast this fight finishes, we'll um we'll see what's up. You know that December eleventh card looks pretty tasty, um so maybe we could do a quick run of back. But um in in reality and being and being smart, I think the best decision is probably wait till um kind of March twenty twenty two. Go home, see my family, friends, come back to America, settle down, get some hard training in, improve on the skill set, improve as a fighter, as a man improve improve my business just grow myself and everything i have around me and that will only benefit me in life so i think the plan is probably probably going to be march march april of 2022 and then we just once the ball is rolling we you know what i mean we're not going to stop it. we're going to just going to kick it down the road faster and just enjoy life and in terms of goal setting and things like that is that something you're doing if so you know, when you look at 2022, is there a place you want to be by the end of it? I want to be, you know, knocking on the door of the rankings. I want to be in them. Where, where do you want to be? Sorry, I didn't hear the end of that bit. Um, so in terms of, you know, goal setting, are yeah. you a guy who, who sets goals and kind of says, I, you know, I want to be this place by this date? Like by the end of 22, where do you want to be in your UFC career? I just want to maintain adventure and freedom and happiness in life. I mean... I'm very blessed to be fighting for the UFC and living, living out the dream that I've dreamed of in a sense of I get to fight for a living and I get to have, like, I get to bring enjoyment and, and to my friends and family and have them be proud of me because I'm on an amazing journey that not many people are blessed to be on. Um, so for me, like, the only thing that I want to do is improve and get better and enjoy life. And for me, undefeated is, is, is a massive thing for me. Remain undefeated, knock people out, put on statements. And I don't care if it takes me four years, five, six, seven, eight years to get to that title. If I put on shows like I know I will, and I beat people the way I know I will, and I'm happy and I'm enjoying life. I'm very young, man. I'm 23, do you know what I mean? There's not a lot of 23-year-olds in the UFC that are undefeated. That have the potential and the hype that I do. I'm gonna take my time. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna milk this cow dry. I'm. I'm gonna take my time and enjoy every se- every second of it, because I'm going to be a UFC champion. And if I rush this, then the longevity might not be there. Whereas if I take my time, the skill set gets better. The confidence gets better. I become more mature. I become more of a businessman. I can see how everything works. I get used to the the UFC structure. I get used to everything, and it. I just become unbeatable. Absolutely, man. That's the, that's the perfect way to end this interview. I'm, I'm very grateful for your time because you've just said everything you had to say there. Brill, brilliant um, promo there for your debut. I can't wait to watch, mate. I'm just trying to make some time. I, I wish you good luck with everything. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for taking my time out of your day. And as always, look, just hit me up after this yeah. after this debut. Just get back on and I'll tell you I was right. I'll tell you. <laughs> can't wait to speak to you again, mate. Good Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.